Where do you keep a seven metre tennis racket, Stefan? Rebecca, you put a smile on my face when you open the program. Today, my partner Rose just moved house, sold her house. She has so many things put away, <laughs> and this, today was the day to kind of find a home for them. Oh, hang on, so you're telling me that Rose is moving and you've opened up a cupboard and gone, oh, honey, look, there's that giant tennis racket. <laughs> but it, I mean, by the way, by the way, it's nine meters, it's nearly oh. 50 feet. It's nine meters. Yeah, the, I mean the head on this thing is the size of a. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Peter Rose here, Ken Fletcher Park YouTube channel. Uh, we're Fan McCauley. We're talking about Ian's mother, um, and we just broke away for a while and reviewed the uh, copious news clippings and paperwork here. Uh, two sprung out to mind immediately. One of them uh, I have to mention because it's a real hot topic of Hugh Lunn which is the tennis stand. And again, I'll clip in the, the photo of uh, Ian, as it happens, uh, in the stands at Milton. Uh, and Ian, tell us a little bit of what you remember, uh, what stood out at Milton in your, not so much mine, but backside, I believe. Yes, yeah. Milton in those days, or as everyone knows, in the early days, uh, they had the old wooden stands. and. Uh, of course, uh, they were made out of um, uh, hardwood timber mm -hmm. and they weren't painted and over the years they, they weathered uh, to the extent that there were quite a few with splinters in them. And of course, uh, you had to be extremely careful you know, the way you moved around on those particular stands. But over the years, and uh, with weathering, uh, they had to uh, repair the stands mm -hmm. um, because uh, they were never painted and they did weather. But uh, there is a particular photo of myself uh, taken uh, back in about 1945, um, and I was about a little over four years old. Well, Nicobot, is that what you call it? Well, those particular, well, everyone can realise that in wartime, uh, clothes were extremely hard to get, and because uh, money was tight, uh, people were on rations. And uh, clothes were actually a lot of the shorts, boys' shorts that were made by their parents out of their father's trouser legs and turned into shorts. Uh -huh. And the yeah. same, the same with shirts. Nothing was wasted in yeah. those days. And the same with shirts. They were made. But I can recall every time I knew of it when I was going to Milton because Mum would say, "You've got to put on your shoes and socks and tie." And, and that was a telling me in those days, I'm off to Milton. Well, that's, yeah. that's a great story. Yeah, and our, our transport in those days, you can realise, uh, cars were at a premium, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, trams in Brisbane were the major, probably transport. And uh, we lived at Cooparoo at the time, and we had to take the tram from Cooparoo into the city, and then we changed at Adelaide Street, and uh, we caught the, uh, I think it was Wilkin Flower or Tuong out to Milton. Yeah, so the people don't understand that, I mean, today Queen Street Mall is the centre of, of uh, Brisbane, but in those days, it's an actual fact, the McDonald and Lee store in George Street was yeah. the centre of Brisbane now, uh, and it taken over that mantle basically from um, the, uh, the large department stores yeah. down the valley. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was all because of the way the trams worked and the way the trams funneled people uh, around the place. So it's a, just an incredible piece of history. Now the next thing that we should talk about, and I'll let you actually read out one of these letters from 4KQ, yeah. um, because they were great supporters even in those days, and I can't quite see the date even with my glasses I can see that date, um, of when that was. Uh, so if you can just read out. Yes, 4KQ. Uh, every Friday evening, they, they held a, uh, a, tenni a tennis top topics segment. Uh, it started about 6 p.m. On, on Friday evenings, and in those sessions, they uh, they discussed probably the winners of the, pr the previous weeks, and uh, also um, top teams that could be uh, meeting each other in the next day. But uh, because of uh, their interest in tennis in those days. Uh, for any of those people that were successful or were champions, they, uh, they used to follow up with, uh, with letters. Uh, mm. And I'll read one of these letters here. It's from uh, 
Mr. R. F. McHugh, 4KQ tennis commentator. And what date was that? And the date of this is the 19th of September 1947. Yep. And on it it says, Mrs. I. McCauley, corner of Nile and Amelia Streets, Cooper Hill, Brisbane. Dear Madam, please accept my hearty congratulations upon winning the Ladies Singles Championship, the Ladies Doubles Championship, and the Mixed Doubles Championship of the QCLTA. Wishing you continued success. Yours sincerely, uh, Mr. McHugh. That's quite amazing. Uh, clean sweep, isn't it? Really? It is, yeah. Three in one, ten in is, one I, year. I, I had missed that when I looked at all the, uh, the photos and that you sent me the other night. Yeah. So uh, that's quite uh, quite a bit of history there. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I said, it just showed us 4KQ, still going strong today, uh, and still a great supporter of uh, tennis in, uh, in Queensland as it happens. Yeah. Um, so with that, um, that brings to close the, uh, this particular YouTube and this little piece of uh, uh, series. Uh, again, Ian, thank you so much, A, for your incredible um, loan to the uh, Tennis Queensland to further the display at Fruit Park, uh, and, but also a personal thank you for uh, taking time out to just to have a, a discussion with us this afternoon. Thank you so much. Thanks, Peter. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Give us a bit of a backdrop as to how the Brisbane International is developing as a, the second most in, important tournament in the uh, Australian um, schedule of tennis, and also just you know how the the tennis centre here has bounced back after the uh, the floods. Well, certainly uh, the the damage was absolutely uh, devastating after the floods, and uh, uh, I guess. Uh, the glowing light now is that uh, in conjunction with the council and uh, allowing us to change uh, the DA, uh, we have a much better facility as a result. We have a much uh, bigger area downstairs. All our uh, player dressing rooms, gymnasium are all absolutely state of the art for the players. And that uh, certainly adds to the enjoyment of the players when they're here uh, during the course of the event. The Brisbane International is now only second to the Australian Open in the Australian...